Testing, testing, one, two. Okay, so I'm here for my first motivational video to post on Patreon. Hope you guys are tuning in for it. Is all the people at the ten dollars tier will have access to this. Um, for this first video, I really just wanna um, show gratitude and kind of tell you guys a bit of a story of my life in general it just so happens that what motivates me to do this is because i just got a call from my mom and she's basically telling me who she is <laughs> you know moms you know you know how they are she's telling me who she is it got it got to the point where i really started laughing because she was absolutely miserable over the phone right miserable over the phone and she's basically saying to me, it, you know, it kind of seemed, my mom doesn't like to see me stand still. She, you know, if you guys, you know, been around the channel for a while, you know I'm Jamaican. So I have a Jamaican mom, right? I have a Jamaican dad too, right? It's crazy sometimes when I, when I think about, she just, she will just call me out of the blue. And just think that I'm not doing anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then just goes off. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? My mom knows nothing about my YouTube channel. She knows nothing about it. She doesn't know that it exists. I haven't told her about it. She doesn't know because I think most, a lot of times, a lot of the stuff that I say on there, I think she might get embarrassed by it because my mom doesn't, you know, she knows I might say some cuss words, but she doesn't know. My, my mom has never heard me say the F word. She's never heard me say it. So... If she should find out about this channel and start watching some some of my stuff, even though I don't really, I still don't really cuss on the channel. Um, she might get a little embarrassed and call me about it. She doesn't know that that's something that I've do dove into. She doesn't know that I share my opinions online. She doesn't know any of that stuff because my mom she doesn't really use social media. Um, if she is on YouTube, it's more to watch like African movies or. You know, like a Dr. Phil video, Ellen video, stuff like that. News stuff, stuff about Trump, stuff like that is what she's into. If she's going to be on YouTube, gospel music, stuff like that. But other than that, my mom has no idea I have a YouTube channel. And I'm not planning to tell her un unless it gets to the point where she's going to have to find out for herself. I don't think anybody in my family knows that I have a YouTube channel because I haven't told any one of them. Um, so um, I'm pretty sure if any of my sisters knew or my brothers knew, they would definitely have called me about it already, <laughs> okay? Um, but they don't know. So this is coming on the heels of that phone call, okay? Because I was planning to do it today to have the first one done to, today. And she just happened to call me before I hit the record button and I took the call. Um, says she's been trying to call me from yesterday and I haven't returned the call. Mind you, my phone has been silent since yesterday because I came home extremely tired yesterday and and my phone has been on silent since. Ha today, I have not put it on silent. I just happened to have my phone in my hand and saw the call popped up and I took the call. I didn't know she was calling me because I didn't check my missed calls. Okay, so... What I really want to talk to you guys about today is just to give you guys a little bit more backstory on me and to motivate you guys to understand that things are not going to stay the same way forever. I wouldn't be in the place today if, you know, because of, you know what I'm saying, God himself, you know what I mean, just smiling on me. And taking me out of a bad situation that I was in. You guys have probably heard me say it a lot of times on the channel that I was homeless. And that's really um, what I want to talk to you guys about. Just to get that out of the way before I continue with more motivational videos. So you guys can get a little bit more backstory on that. As I said, this is exclusive access to me. 
exclusive access to me at this ten dollar tier where i'm going to share some really really personal stuff about my life stuff that has that i have overcome and that has motivate me to go forward and to do business and all of this other stuff that i'm doing now you know motivating others being a mentor to others and all of this other stuff that that i'm doing now but no matter what i do <laughs> no matter what i do if i take a couple of days break and my mom knows about it, she will call me to say, what are you doing sitting down for so long? You should be working. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because for some reason, no matter how much you do, I don't know if it's the same way for you guys, but my mom is just, she's just like that. But anyways, let's talk about it, man. So I came to America when I was, I think it was when I was 19 years old. I don't want to go back and I think it, it was somewhere around that time. I don't remember the exact age I was. I, I'm pretty sure if I go back and check, I can tell you guys, but that's not the real thing here. So I came America. I lived in New York for two years, about a year into that whole situation. Um, I was living with my brother, my brother, when I when I came up, he was he wasn't married at the time, but he got married. Um, and let's just say, his wife didn't like me. So, and the reason for that was, um, I'm gonna kind of speed it up as we go along. I'll give you guys more details about what happened, but I'm just kind of speeding to the 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 bad part here. So, um. His wife did not like me. I'm going to put it like that. She she was very two-faced about certain things. And the reason for that was she didn't like the amount of time that my brother spent with me. I was really, I was old enough to take care of myself. But at the same time, me and my brother was really close. You know, duh. Me and my brother is really close, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, nowadays, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's my bro. You know what I'm saying? Like. I looked up to him, you know, looked to him for a lot of things. So it's like he paid a lot of attention to me because I, you know, I was new to America and stuff like that. Kind of showing me the robes when he comes home. You know what I'm saying? Me and him would play video games together and stuff like that. So, but he still spent a lot of time with her. So I could never understand, understand why she was, you know what I'm saying, so adamant about you know, certain things, you know what I'm saying? Um, so at one point I was sleeping on the floor out when I came up, I was sleeping on the floor when I just got there. I didn't mind it because it was a really small apartment that they were living in. It was a one bedroom. And then they moved from there to another place where they had two bedrooms, but they, you know, I still couldn't sleep on the bed. My brother never contested this. He never contested it. It never fought her about anything that she decided. Um, I could tell you guys of one incident that happened that I really broke down and cried about because, you know, I felt less than a person in that situation to, to give you guys some context about what type of person this woman was. My brother is not with her anymore. So cool beans. Um, I used to, to take a chair from the dining room, from around the dining room table to my brother would play, play video games on the, on the computer. And I would pull that chair to watch him play. Um, eventually what she did was she roped the, um, the chair, the chair legs to the table itself. So I couldn't move. <laughs> so so I couldn't move the chair, right? So it was just weird for me at that moment. I'm laughing about it now, but I'm telling you guys, when that happened, I still, you know, I sat on the floor to watch my brother play because, you know, he would, you know, play and, you know, talk to me, you know, um... You know, at that time, I had a job too, and st and stuff like that. So it was like it wasn't an, it wasn't an issue. You know what I mean? 
Um, and I would sleep on the cold floor. It's New York. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the room, be, the room would be mad cold and stuff. The heater in the room wasn't working. So I would be mad cold in the room, super uncomfortable and stuff. But I never complained. I never complained about it, you know. And it was a very tough situation for me, even though I was living with my bro. I, I, I was trying to not make trouble for him, right? But I remember... I can tell you guys what happened, what caused me to leave and what made me decide to leave. Because I left off my own. I wasn't forced. I, 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 in some ways, I kind of felt forced out. But, <laughs> but you know, but I made the decision to leave. And I tell you, I'll tell you guys this. Never blame anybody for choices that you have made. Um, I left to go live with someone, to, to live with someone else. And that person, they lost their place. And that's how I ended up on the, on the street homeless, right? So what happened that caused, that caused me to leave? That situation that I told you about, the, the chair and the table, it, it, it broke me. It broke me to the point where I was like, no. I, you know what I'm saying? Like she would see, she would come out the room, see me in the living room, like on the floor, not even on her furniture or anything. And she would have a problem with it. And that's when I realized that she really had a problem with me. It was not me touching her stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like she just had a problem with me as an individual. You know, she wasn't white. She's black. She's from the Caribbean too. You know what I'm saying? So um, it, it was just weird for me and I just couldn't, I, I couldn't take it anymore. I, I just couldn't. I mean, even though when I think about it, you know, I can laugh about it now, but it, it, even though I'm talking about it, I'm getting really choked up and hurt because it's, it's a situation where I felt so much less than a person. It's, it's, it's like, I felt like absolute garbage. And I was like, no, I, I can't stay in this situation. And I didn't even tell my brother I was leaving. Because I know he wasn't going to. I didn't expect him to leave his marriage to, you know what I'm saying, for me. Or, you know what I'm saying, like, I didn't want to put him in that position. So I didn't even really tell him I was leaving. I think he saw me, like, months after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a little bit after that, like. You know, he came to check on me because he knew where I worked. And he came to check on me, asked me if I was okay. I told him, I'm I'm good, I'm okay, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I know my brother cares about me. I know I'm getting I'm getting a little choked up now because me and him has really, really gotten back to a good place since then. Cause this this is years, years ago. Years ago. And even when I got married, it's a story for another day. He was the best man at my wedding. So we patched things up. You know what I'm saying? We squashed all of that without even talking about it, actually. You know, we just understood each other. Because it was a situation where he couldn't really make a move. And I just had to make a decision for myself. Even though I ended up being homeless because of that decision. I never, at first, yes, I was blaming him at first and then after I got a little older I'm like no I made that choice to leave and go into that situation not knowing what could have possibly happened you know I don't know if if they had an argument about it I don't know I don't know what happened all I know is I am who I am and over the years I just yeah I'm not the easiest person to to live with either even though I was when I was there I was doing my absolute best i'm telling you guys right now i was doing my absolute best to not get in this lady's way i mean literally i was literally trying to avoid this lady i didn't have i didn't have a key to the place so i so literally i had to during the winter time i had to wait out in the cold and wait for one of them to get home to get in to the apartment and you know stuff like that will really teach you, I don't know if that teaches you how to be humble or whatever the situation is, but I just can't take it anymore, I had to leave. 
So when I ended up on the street, after the friend that I was staying with lost the place, um, I ended up on the street. So in turn, I lost my job because I couldn't shower. I couldn't do any of those things. So I was, I was trying to, you know, cover up the, my smell and, and stuff like that until eventually they figured out that I, you know what I'm saying? You can only cover up your smell for so long, you know? Got fired from the job, lost the job. I was on the street for a good amount of time, in and out of shelters, city shelters, um, more better shelters that help you to find jobs and stuff like that. I was going through it. And I'm talking about through about two seasons. You know what I'm saying? So it was it, it was a tough experience, man. And you know, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, and that's why I have such a soft spot for for homeless people now, which is is something that I'm that I have to plan for in the f- future. I just feel like it's something that is so close to me that I feel like I just have to do something about it. Which is which is an initiative that I'm planning to do later on in my future that I'm building towards to really try to do something about the whole the homeless epidemic in this country, which is something that's that I'm really passionate about that I'm going through as see, I haven't told you guys everything about me. And now only you Patreon people gonna know about this. But <laughs> but anyways um the homeless the homeless thing thank God it didn't break me. One of the things that I had, I had this huge jacket. I'm giving you guys a lot of backstory here, so listen up. I had a huge winter jacket, right? Which <laughs> it was, it was, it was big, but it was, you know, what I'm saying it. It kept me warm sometimes. Put it like that, because it's so cold in New York. <laughs> if you live in New York, you understand what I'm saying. It gets cold. Right, I had this huge, this huge winter jacket, and at one point, if you guys know, if if you guys know New York, you understand what I'm. If you guys are from New York, you're gonna understand a lot of this. What I'm saying, but I'm gonna try to describe it as vividly as possible, so who's not from New York will understand this. I'm probably going to post this first one on YouTube, my Patreon people, um, just so people can understand what I'm trying, what I'm going to be sharing over <laughs> over there on the Patreon so more people will go over there and support us. It's the the Long Island train, right? In in Manhattan, the final stop for the Long Island train. Long Island um train stations they're different from the regular subway in new york they're different you pay different it's just different because it's like you're traveling from a city to us to another city you know it's not like the five boroughs are different from upstate new york and long island staten island right you have staten island you have long island right so it's like long island is more suburbs you know um those bars are like cities, you know, you got, you got Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, and that other place, <laughs> you know, I haven't been there in a while, I don't remember, you got Staten Island's one of the bars, I think, yeah, I think that's it, yeah, I think I'm right, <laughs> anyways, anyways, that's not the, that's not the, the meat of the matter here, I used to leave my things, and I'm talking about, like, I, didn't really have anything. I didn't really have anything. I had I had barely any clothes. I I probably had like two pairs of clothes that I was kind of trying to rotate. I had w- one pair of shoe. Whew, I'm really tr- I'm really trying guys to not cry here. So <laughs> Because every uh, for for the first time in a long time, I'm actually talking out talking this out in detail. So, just bear at me for a second here, because it, it's it's a really tough subject for me when I'm going in detail with it. 
I used to leave my things at that last stop. I don't even remember. I think it's Atlantic Avenue in Manhattan. The last stop of the Long Island Railway, whatever they call it. Right? So, I used to go there. Sometimes I slept there. But it's like all the way at the back of the platform that I left my things. They're always like having like building stuff and, you know, working on the railway. So they always have a pile of like stuff back there, you know, maybe plyboard or something. So I used to hide my stuff like in between that stuff, um, you know, and I would try to hop the turnstile, which is turnstile is like the pass, the gateway, the thing that lifts up. So you can get on the train. I didn't have any money. So I basically had to try to jump it while security is not looking. Try to hide from the cameras or, or whatever. Just to get on the train so I can have somewhere warm. So I would stay on the train all night. And what I would do the next day is try to walk and see if I can find something or someone that would give me something to eat I would walk miles I would walk miles I'm talking about 5 to 10 miles per day to go to a church I used to have this pantry stuff. I'm talking about I would go three, four days without eating. Sometimes a, a whole week without eating. And I mean, it was a horrible situation. 